What's up guys, Mikkel here, and have you ever wondered why some of the biggest names in crypto refuse to talk about Ripple and XRP? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why that is the case. I actually came across some very interesting information that I have not seen anyone really talk about, and I think it's going to give you a really clear answer why so many of the big names in crypto are so bullish on Ethereum, but will refuse to talk about XRP. I also want to talk about a pretty big lie that Gary Gensler just got caught in and while normally I would think hey it doesn't matter this guy's just gonna lie whenever he wants this lie actually came when he was under oath in front of the US house in this video I want to show you exactly what took place there because things are really starting to look bad for Gary Gensler for a while he was able to kind of coast in his spot at the SEC with very little attention on him but it seems like the attacks against him are really ramping up i want to go over the new situation he just put himself in make sure to stick around for that like always your support means so much to this channel make sure if you haven't already you like this video and subscribe to the channel it's only going to take you a couple seconds and it's really going to help this channel grow into the future also if you ever need a good place to buy some xrp or the flare token make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video with that said though let's jump right into it and i hope you guys enjoy the content so I want to start this video out and talk about a pretty interesting new initiative coming out of Ripple right now in regards to carbon credits built on the XRP ledger. Now, this is an absolutely massive market. Ripple actually talked about this a couple months back, but then I didn't really hear anything about it for a while. But recently, they put this new video on their Twitter, kind of breaking down how important it is to start building these carbon credit markets on the XRP ledger. I'm not going to play you the whole thing. I just want to show you a quick clip from it because it's a pretty cool video. And I think I want to talk about a kind of a larger point here. Let me play the video and then we'll break it down. So unfortunately, I can't actually play this video because it has music in the background and I know it's going to get a copyright strike, but it is on Ripple's Twitter. So if you want to check it out, just go there. Now, why I wanted to show you this video, one, because it's actually a pretty cool video. They did a really good job with this, but more importantly, they really talk about why it's so important to actually use blockchain technology to build these carbon credit markets. And the XRP ledger really is the perfect place to do it. It's fast, it's transparent, but most importantly, it's a green technology. It's not burning massive amounts of energy like Bitcoin, so it actually makes sense to build a carbon credit market there. Now, if you're thinking about carbon credits and you're just like, oh, those are dumb, no one actually uses those, just understand, the carbon credit market is actually massive. Quick Google search will tell us that this market is supposed to grow to a size of 2.68 trillion by 2028. Now this is an absolutely massive market and the fact that Ripple is really taking up this initiative makes a ton of sense to me. Right now carbon credits are kind of a thing that are kind of a black hole. No one really is able to track them, they're kind of just tossed around, sold back and forth between companies, but there's no actual market to trade the credits. This is what I mean when I talk about there are going to be things built in the future on the XRP ledger that we can't even comprehend right now. The carbon credit market is something that no one really thought of a couple years ago. But at the end of the day, it makes so much sense to have a marketplace to trade these credits. You are going to see so many marketplaces just like this pop up on the XRP ledger, things that I can't even think about right now. That's why when a lot of times I see people try to value the XRP ledger, I just sit there and say, yes, that makes a lot of sense and you are getting a good value for based on what you're predicting, but there are going to be so many things that pop up in the future that you can't even wrap your head around right now. I think this is a great example and this is an initiative I think is actually a really good idea. It's also perfectly aligned with how the world is going. You cannot listen to anything now anymore without hearing about ESG and whether or not it's it's environmentally friendly and this just fits perfectly into this narrative and it's going to make a lot of people out there who maybe don't care as much about blockchain technology be forced to take a second look at it and say oh this technology is helping to fight climate change oh maybe i will pay more attention to it and one thing that i do think is pretty funny and i tweeted this out earlier today i said if the sec cares so much about esg why did they green light bitcoin and attack xrp 
just another example of the SEC being horribly inconsistent. They act like they care so much about the climate. They act like they're getting ready to crack down on all these companies' carbon usage. Meanwhile, they literally green light the most energy intensive cryptocurrency out there and declare war on one of the most efficient. Just shows who we're dealing with here. The SEC makes a lot of claims. Most of them are them just trying to push their own agenda and throw something else random behind it. So I want to move on and talk about a pretty sticky situation Gary Gensler has recently put himself in because for a while Gary Gensler was running around saying some pretty absurd things but he was just saying those things in his own personal capacity so he was kind of getting away with it. But very recently, he actually testified under oath in front of the U.S. Congress, and I think he might have made a pretty big mistake. Gary Gensler said under oath in front of Congress that the SEC has not made a determination about the status of Ethereum. He was actually pressed really hard, hey, is Ethereum a security or a commodity? And he said the SEC has made no determination and he won't comment on it. One thing that is very interesting though is Gary Gensler actually said himself that the SEC has already claimed Ethereum is not a security. Now I want to make one thing clear before I get into this. This does not mean that the logic behind why Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities is correct. This is just what Gary Gensler was saying back in the day about the SEC's determination. And the real reason I'm pointing it out is because it completely contradicts what he's saying now. Gary Gensler said when he was working at MIT, but I would know in terms of market value, probably three quarters of this space have already been determined by the SEC not to be securities. Bitcoin's 54% of the market, Ether's about 15% of the market, so if you add that up, you're at 70% of the market, that is not securities. They may be cash, they may be commodities, but they're not securities. Gary Gensler right here is acknowledging that the SEC has already made the determination that Ethereum is not a security. As soon as he got to the SEC, his opinion on this matter changed, but what is important to understand is the facts never changed. The SEC made it very clear, Ethereum is not a security, but Gary Gensler is trying to change the facts because he wants control over it. What we can see here is that Gary Gensler, when he was under oath, essentially lied. He said the SEC had made no determination over Ethereum, but he literally admits right here that he knows the SEC has made a determination. This is once again the SEC being completely hypocritical. This is once again Gary Gensler not trying to provide clarity in the market, but rather trying to push his own agenda forward. Now these are the kinds of things that can actually get Gary Gensler in some pretty big trouble going forward. He is lying under oath, purposely going back on things he said in the past, and it's stuff like this that aren't only going to piss off the opposing political party, but it's going to piss off your own political party. There are a lot of people on his side of the aisle who like cryptocurrencies, and for him to not only just be attacking projects arbitrarily, but also purposely adding confusion to the market and going back on things that were already declared, well, this is a really bad look and we're kind of moving away from the fact that, hey, is this guy just a little too lawsuit happy? No, this guy is trying to bring this industry backwards and it could not be more obvious that this is no accident. He is intentionally going back on things he has said in the past. Now, I want to finish this video off and talk about a very interesting topic and I don't think a lot of people understand this. So many people ask me, why do so many high profile people hate Ripple and XRP? Why do so many of the news organizations in crypto hate Ripple and XRP? And at the end of the day, the real reason is, is a lot of the early cryptocurrency companies were financed by big VCs, people like A16Z, people like Mike Novogratz. And what Ripple did that was so different than all the other crypto startups out there is Ripple refused to sell XRP to VCs. People like Ethereum, and we all know about the Ethereum whales, people at the Ethereum Foundation sold ETH to insiders. People at so many of these different companies went to the VCs and say, hey, we'll give you these tokens if you invest this money in us. Essentially, these were illegal securities offerings. They were ICOs. Now, funny enough, Ripple actually refused to do this. Ripple refused to give these VCs early access to XRP or refused to sell them cheap XRP at a discount. 
and this pissed off a lot of VCs. They wanted super cheap XRP because they know how valuable it will be one day. But they were all so mad at Ripple because Ripple refused to give them this sweetheart deal. This is why they all trash talk Ripple and XRP today. They're just mad that they didn't get cheap XRP. And it's so funny to me because this is something that's not talked about at all, but it's so important to understand this. These people know XRP is going to be massive in the future. They just are mad that they didn't get cheap XRP. And looking back on it, it's also hilarious that with all this insider trading or free allocation of cheap assets going on, it's so funny that Ripple actually refused to engage in this activity, and yet they're the ones who got in trouble with the SEC. There's actually a really early quote of Vitalik Buterin actually coming out and saying, yeah, what Ripple is doing is actually legally a lot easier. They're not selling cheap XRP to these VCs, and that's actually a very smart strategy from a legal perspective. So what does Vitalik Buterin go and do? He goes and gives all these VCs cheap Ethereum, and then the SEC goes after Ripple, the company who is trying to do it right since day one. Just understand that it's so important that everyone bad-mouthing Ripple and XRP has a secret agenda, and one of those agendas is pumping their own bags and just trying to FUD XRP because they didn't get a sweetheart deal. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out.